bro, what are you watching? Oh, dude, I'm just watching this show about people that got killed, tortured, murdered, abused, beaten, mutilated. Uh, why? I don't know, man. It's just so calming and peaceful, honestly. That's concerning. Whether you belong on a list or just have a morbid curiosity in how these twisted people's minds work, this video is for you. One thing to quickly note is that this list is not based off kill count alone. That scary factor is based off of their general vibe, their story, and also their methods. Let's begin. Starting off strong, we have Ted Bundy. This man is literally nightmare fuel. Why was Ted so scary? For me personally, it comes down to a few reasons. Primarily being how unassuming he came off. He was literally a wolf in sheep's clothing. He was well-educated, charismatic, charming, although he had a truly twisted and dark side that only came out once you were alone with him. Besides him being almost completely hidden in plain sight, he was also a master of escape and literally escaped police twice. And after the second time he escaped, he committed six more murders, which is literally insane. Something that I find completely ironic is that Ted actually attended law school for a year, which is super random, but I mean, it's not the first time something like that's happened. Once he was finally caught, he eventually admitted to over 30 murders, abducting, assaulting, and murdering young women. And during his trial, he even partially represented himself. And during his sentencing, he literally proposed to his girlfriend. This dude was loving the attention and is a complete lunatic. Next up, we have Harold Shipman, AKA Dr. Death. If you thought that name was bad, trust me, it gets worse. Harold was a family doctor in the small town of Hyde in the United Kingdom. Harold was well known and well respected in his community and a majority of his clients were the elderly. This might seem a little bit random, but this fact is very important. Now let's kind of step back and look at his history. In his early years, he was the primary caretaker for his mother with cancer, and that led him to seeking out medical practice. He became a doctor, had a family, and had a successful practice, although he did end up developing a drug habit that almost cost him his practice. He was fined on multiple drug charges and even went to rehab, but was considered cured by the end of his treatment and was free to practice once again. Once he continued his practice is when things really began to take a turn, specifically elderly women began to die under his care. Shipman would use any reason possible to use a hypodermic needle on his patients, which he would use to deliver them a deadly dose of morphine, causing them to overdose. The interesting thing is this was the same medicine he gave his mother when he was younger. Like Ted Bundy, Shipman is terrifying because of how unassuming he was. Not only was he respected in the community and well-known and a family man, but he was also a family doctor probably one of the last people that you would assume to be ending people's lives intentionally. Another really scary factor was that his patient base was so vulnerable. And unfortunately, early on, a lot of his victims were just written off because of old age. Shipman was found out because before he killed his last victim, he modified her will to have her leave everything to her family doctor, aka Shipman. Her family was suspicious and they investigated. After a thorough police investigation, it was discovered that Dr. Death was responsible for over 215 deaths. Absolutely terrifying. Third up, we have Andre Chikatilo, AKA the Rostov Ripper or the Butcher of Rostov. He was a serial killer from Soviet Russia. The fact that he was in Soviet Russia actually played a big part in the reason why he was able to go on for so long. The state controlled media was not allowed to talk about serial killings or anything of the sort, specifically because they believed that they did not have that issue. They didn't have serial killers, they thought. They believed that to only be a Western phenomenon. Following the trend, Chikatilo was just an unassuming traveling businessman. Although his urges were much deeper and much darker. And unfortunately, Chikatilo was the type of person known as a necrosatist, someone who gained arousal from pain and violence and murder. Chikatilo targeted runaways, prostitutes, and homeless people as they were considered undesirables or less dead. Over time, the evidence was undeniable and the police were starting to suspect a group was at the loose. And even the general public was starting to believe that there was a werewolf just because of how gruesome the bodies were left. Unfortunately, these investigations were not fruitful simply because they were not looking in the right places. They were literally investigating satanic cults and recent psychiatric ward alumni. It wasn't until they brought in a psychiatrist that they were able to begin making progress and realize that maybe the killer was a normal seeming businessman who could be among us. In an interesting turn of events, Chikatilo was literally caught at a bus stop talking to a potential victim and was found with Vaseline, rope, and a knife in his briefcase. Although once he was brought in, his blood did not match the DNA on the killings and he was only held for a theft he committed. It wasn't until a few years later he was once again brought back in to the police station and at this point they knew they had to get him. 
although they didn't have much evidence and time was ticking before they had to release him again. It only took a two-hour conversation between Chikatilo and the psychiatrist to have Chikatilo crack and confess to everything. Chikatilo was responsible for the gruesome death of 56 young men and women and was sentenced to death by a bullet in the back of the head. All right, things have gotten pretty dark, but we're just getting started. Let's just take a quick breather together. It's so crazy to think about how twisted these individuals are. Something I wanted to quickly mention is that this video is in no particular order. These individuals do not deserve a ranking, and I will not be giving them one. All right, buckle up. We're jumping back in. Next up, bringing us back to the U.S., we have Jeffrey Dahmer. Dahmer is probably one of the most infamous and well-documented serial killers of all time. If you know anything about Jeffrey Dahmer's story, it's not hard to believe why he's on this list. He is one of the most depraved individuals likely to ever exist. From a very young age, he was experiencing intense, violent thoughts, and it didn't take long for him to begin acting on them. From the years of 1978 until his arrest in 1991, Jeff had killed 17 people in uniquely horrific and gruesome ways. Jeff would drug, assault, murder, assault again, chop up, eat, and more to his victims and the bodies of his victims. Not only would he drug, assault, murder, and eat his victims, but he would also mutilate their bodies and keep parts of their body as souvenirs. He even said himself that this made him feel closer to his victims. He says that he didn't want to kill anybody, it was just his only option as he wanted companionship. According to him, his ultimate goal wasn't to murder, he simply wanted a slave who he could control completely and not have to worry about any of their wants or desires. This man was truly, truly twisted. And because there was no death penalty in Wisconsin, he was actually sentenced to 973 years in jail, although he was murdered in jail by a cellmate, thankfully. Following the trend of disgusting, disturbing cannibals, we have Joachim Kroll, a disturbing serial killer from Germany. Joachim had an IQ of 76, which is just above the line of being considered mentally challenged. Kroll would primarily find his victims by either going to smaller towns outside of where he lived or simply strolling through and hiding in the forest waiting for victims to pass by. Kroll targeted women and young girls specifically, with his youngest victim being five years old. He would typically start a conversation with a victim and then shortly after strangle them to death and then assault their corpse. He shortly after began cutting chunks of his victim's body off and taking them home to eat. The bodies of his victims were typically found a few days after the incident, although they were never linked to him. And one of the most unfortunate parts of his story is that typically people close to the victim would be considered primary suspects. And there was multiple completely innocent suspects who ended their own lives out of sheer frustration and embarrassment of being considered a suspect. As I'm probably sure you've realized at this point, it's very common that a lot of these people were not necessarily deemed to be serial killers just at a first glance. Even in his own apartment building, Kroll was known as Uncle Kroll to the local children as he would give them treats and allow them to play with dolls in his apartment, which he kept to lure the children. Kroll was eventually caught after he killed a neighborhood child. He tried to dispose of the remains of this child he didn't want in the toilet in the shared bathroom, and as he left the bathroom with the toilet clogged, he told one of his neighbors not to go in there. The toilet was clogged. His neighbor still went to use the bathroom and saw the horrible mess that was in the toilet. He contacted the police, and the police quickly investigated and questioned Kroll directly. They forced their way into his apartment and saw that he was cooking a stew. Kroll quickly admitted to everything and they noticed that the stew literally contained human remains from the victim they were searching for. This man was seriously a monster. Moving over to South America, from Colombia specifically, we have Pedro Lopez, also known as the Monster of the Andes. If you thought it was frustrating and just nonsensical how the police didn't catch any of these people earlier, you're gonna absolutely hate how the story goes. Lopez was literally found guilty of murdering 110 girls in Ecuador alone, but he also confessed to killing an additional 240 women across Peru and Colombia. Now, obviously for having over 300 alleged murders, he is obviously sentenced to death, right? No? Well, he's at least sentenced to life in prison, right? What if I told you that he was literally released on good behavior and now his whereabouts are completely unknown? I'm not making this up, by the way. Pedro Lopez was literally released in 1998 on good behavior and now his whereabouts are not known. I seriously cannot fathom whose idea this was and how they could justify this at all. On top of being somebody who just murdered hundreds of people, something that is extremely scary about this person right now is the fact that they were born in 1948, meaning that right now in 2023, 
if they're still alive, they're only 75 years old. Meaning that if you just see an old person walking down the side of the road, they might be the monster of the Andes. Insane. This next entry on our very disturbing list brings us back to where we started in the USA. This entry is our third American and final entry. His name is John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy is probably one of the most arranged individuals on this list. And if you've heard of Jeffrey Dahmer, you've probably heard of John Wayne Gacy. Gacy was a businessman and politician and was a liked and respected community figure. Like most people on this list, he was rather unassuming and unfortunately living a double life. Gacy had a family, a wife, a child, but that didn't stop him from assaulting young men. And although they were silent for some time out of fear for their lives, eventually they came out with their story and Gacy was charged and imprisoned. Like the previous entry on this list, he was released on good behavior. Absolutely wild. After he was released from prison, he was essentially able to get a fresh start in life and was able to get a job, find a new wife, and start a construction company that was able to be quite lucrative. Although it wasn't long until he was at his antics once again. Gacy developed an alter ego named Pogo the Clown, which allowed him to express parts of himself he felt that he had to repress. He appeared at birthday parties, community events, and did magic for children in the hospital. Unfortunately, these displays only brought him closer to his darker self. Gacy began cruising around at night in his full clown getup and would force young boys to get in his vehicle at gunpoint and then assault them and murder them and bury them in his basement. Gacy was eventually caught because his basement was so full of bodies, his last victim he actually had to ditch in a local river. This body was shortly after found and the police were able to connect the dots and immediately began investigating Gacy. It wasn't long before they got a warrant, searched the basement, and found the bodies. It's interesting because Gacy always denied the accusations and even claimed that the bodies in his basement was a setup to destroy his political career. This man was a complete lunatic. And with that, we conclude my list of the scariest serial killers from around the world. Let me know in the comments the most infamous serial killer from your country if I didn't mention one already. This video is only my fifth video, but was definitely the toughest video I've ever made. Doing research on this video was honestly pretty brutal, and I tried to keep this video as tame as possible for what it was. And if you want detailed, explicit explanations of what happened with these people, there is tons of video out there around that. What I wanted to create was just a simplified version that kind of gave a brief overview of different serial killers from around the world in an interesting way. This video was kind of lacking jokes for obvious reasons, but my next video should be a little bit funnier. And if you enjoyed this video, you would probably enjoy this video about historical torture methods. It's on screen. Feel free to check it out. But that's all for this video. See you next time. Trust me, bro.